The battle over, the booty collected, the ransoms negotiated. It was time for some situational scriptures. Most religions considered murder, piracy, kidnapping, and terrorism bad, so Muhammad needed a special dispensation. As before, I will weave the hadith into the fabric of the Quran to give Allah's scriptures the context of time, circumstance, and place they otherwise lack. Tabari. When the events of Badar were over, Allah revealed the eighth surah, the spoils of war, in its entirety. The two armies met. There were no armies, just merchants and militants. And Allah defeated the Meccans with Muslim swords. Seventy of them were killed, and seventy were taken captive. The previous death toll was forty-four killed, and an equal number brought back for ransom. The lower number is also in line with Ishak's meticulously documented total of fifty dead and forty-three taken hostage. Abu Bekr said, O Prophet of Allah, these are your people, your family. They are your cousins, fellow clansmen, and nephews. I think that you should accept ransoms for them, so that what we take from them will strengthen us. Yes, it's true. Islam was financed by kidnapping and ransom. The wealth of pagans was forged into the sword of Islam, and Abu Bekr, Muhammad's blood-sucking promoter, was only interested in the money, never religion. Tabari, what do you think of Kitab? Muhammad asked. I say you should hand them over to me so that I can cut off their heads. Hand Hamza's brother over to him so that he can cut off his head. Hand over a quill and a leaf so that he can cut off his brother's head. Thus Allah will know that there is no leniency in our heart toward the unbelievers. The messenger liked what Abu Bakr said, and did not like what I said, and accepted ransoms for the captives. Bloodshed was good, money was better. This tradition continues to pull back the veil on Islam. It was a performance one in which a pagan god played the starring role. Tabari, the next day I went to the prophet in the morning. He was sitting with Abu Bakr, and they were weeping. I said, O oh, messenger of Allah, tell me what has made you and your companion weep. If I find to cause to weep, I will weep with you, and if not, I will pretend to weep, because you are weeping. The prophet said, It is because of the taking of ransoms, which has been laid before your companions. It was laid before me that I should punish them instead. Allah revealed, It is not for any prophet to have captives until he has made a slaughter in the land. After that, Allah made booty lawful for them. Because money enabled slaughter, Muhammad would have both. Ishak Following Badar, Muhammad sent a number of raiders with orders to capture some of the Meccans and burn them alive. But on the following day, he sent word to us, I told you to burn these men if you got a hold of them, but I decided none has the right to punish by fire save Allah. So if you capture them, kill them. The Hadith report on the Battle of Badar ends with these words. On the Badar expedition, the messenger took the sword of Du al-Fakar as booty. It had belonged to Munabi. On that day also he took Abu Jal's camel as booty. It was a Mahri dromedary on which he used to go on raids. Nothing but the best for Muhammad. After all, he was a prophet. It is said he wrote Ma'akil, which translated means blood money, on his sword. Blood still dripping from the implements of war, the dark spirit of Islam revealed a surah that made killing a religious duty and thievery a sacred right. The Spoils of War, Quran 8, verse 1. They question you about windfalls taken as spoils of war. Say, booty is at the disposal of Allah and the Messenger. They belong to us and are for our benefit. So fear Allah and adjust your way of thinking in this matter. Obey Allah and his messenger. How convenient. But this was crass, even for Muhammad. 
his propensity to steal was obviously being questioned. So he claimed that his God said, The booty is ours, it belongs to us. Some might think that being a pirate would be a great gig if you could get God to sponsor your raids. But for Muhammad that wasn't enough. He was after more than money. He coveted power too. So he had his God say, Obey Allah and the Messenger. Then, for those who were squabbling over the Prophet's new career path, he professed, Adjust your way of thinking and fear me. The communist used to call it re-education. But no matter how you interpret this, it isn't religious, it's disgusting. Muhammad's companions agree with my assessment. Ishak, the spoils of war, Surah, was handed down because we quarreled about the booty. So Allah took it away from us and gave it to his apostle. When he did, we learned to fear Allah and obey his messenger. The hadith goes on to report, For in truth our army had gone out with the prophet seeking the caravan because we wanted its booty. The Quran's attempt at religion were overt efforts to control people through fear, ritual, indoctrination, and taxation. Quran 8, verse 2. The only believers are those who feel fear and terror when Allah is mentioned. When his Quran revelations, like this one, focused on killing and stealing, are recited to them because it increases their faith, Muslims establish regular prayers and pay out of the booty we have given them. Muslims who fear will obey, and they will pay. Conditioning men to be submissive through the implementation of religious rituals was good. Motivating them to loot was even better. Quran 8 verse 4 These are true Muslims. For them are exalted grades of honor with their Lord and pardon and a bountiful provision. Who gets the exalted grades of honor, the bountiful provision, you may ask? Muslim militants who leave their homes to rob caravans and murder their kin. That's who. Verse 5. Your Lord ordered and caused you, the good Muslims, out of your homes to fight for the true cause, even though some Muslims disliked it and were averse to fighting. They argued with you concerning this matter of piracy. Even after it was made clear to them, it was as if they were being driven to their death. This verse is speaking of the rift between the good warlike Muslims and the bad, peaceful ones. Good Muslims were ready, willing, and able to plunder and kill, just as they are today. The bad, peaceful Muslims wanted to live and let live. But peace was something Allah couldn't tolerate. Quran 8, verse 7 Behold, Allah promised that one of the two parties would fall and become yours. You, Muhammad, coveted the caravan the one which was not armed. This verse confirms that Muhammad was a pirate, not a general or a prophet. It devastates Islam's credibility, yet it is often missed because the passage goes on to proclaim one of the most fearsome words ever spoken. Allah wished to confirm and justify the truth by his words, wipe the infidels out to the last. The confirmation is clear. It is the justification that's muddled. Mohammed left Medina with his militants for the express purpose of robbing an unarmed caravan. He wanted money. His God wanted war. The dark spirit of Islam wanted to slaughter and humiliate all of those who did not bow to his authority.